Hello Sunny Hills Church, this is Petrina and I'm glad to be with you today. I want to share with you just a few thoughts about how we might approach some of our current social um, circumstances that may be a bit uncomfortable um, for us, but uh, that I think are actually giving us an opportunity to show the love of God and to show how Christ would want us to respond in this manner, also to be able to show others the joy, the family, the in the social just justice, the love that we have within the body of Christ. I think it also challenges us within the body to make sure that we are loving one another and treating uh, one another with that uh, respect that Christ calls us to. So as I was going through and getting ready to share with you, uh, you know, I looked up a number of, of verses and thought about a number of things and was prayerful And I came up with a few different scriptures that I want to share with you as well as a few thoughts. So the first scripture I want to share with you is 1 John um, 4, 7 and 8, which you're all probably familiar with. And that is, beloved, let us love one another for love is of God and everyone that loves is born of God and knows God. He that loves not knows not God for God is love. So I think that really sets us up to understand what we are called to do and that is to love one another so we need to first off be coming from that position of love now the thing about love is even though we're told to love it's not something that really can be mandated it's something that needs to come from the heart and that i think is the issue um or or the biggest issue that we have in our society if everybody just loved everyone as Christ loves the church we should really not be having any um, issues but we can't mandate that so within the church if we're able to do it we can at least show others and we can respond in love as an example to others additionally if we're in positions where we have the ability to make decisions, we have the ability to make, um, to um, set a line or, or set a tone, if we're able to set one that is grounded in a, in the love for Jesus and comes out of that respect and order, then that also allows us to set a tone for him. The next verse that I um, thought about um, comes from Matthew chapter 22, and this is when the Pharisees are asking about, you know, which are the um, greatest um, scriptures and so, or greatest commandments. And Jesus says, the first one you've heard of, you know, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all their thy mind and then the second one is similar and that is to love thy neighbor as thyself and so as I was um, thinking through things that love thy neighbor as thyself um, came to mind because I thought again if we're able to love others like we take care of ourselves we want the best for ourselves. We want to be in good good health. We want to be in good living circumstances. And so um, we need to keep that in mind as we're interacting with others and as we're um, thinking about uh, the decisions that we make and how they impact others. Are we making decisions that would put others in situations that we would like to be in or give others opportunity that we would like to have or that we think Christ would like us um, to have or to extend? The third verse that I thought about was later on in Matthew, Matthew um, chapter 25. And um, this Matthew chapter 25, it talks about um, the sheep and the goats, particularly. I'm looking at the end of the chapter and it's talking about when the son of man um, comes again and it um, toward the end of the um, chapter there's a question about uh, having taken care of 
um, responsibilities basically and it's um, Matthew 25 and in verse 40 um, or actually I should go back up a, a little bit to verse um, 37 and it says the righteous will answer him Lord when do we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink when do we see you a stranger and invite you in or needing clothes and clothe you when do we see you sick or in prison and go to visit and verse 40 says the king will re will reply I tell you the truth whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine you did for me and so um, and then the next verse says, um, if you, basically, if you hadn't done it, that um, you should depart from me. I know you not. Um, so again, it kind of sets this tone for um, us taking care of others when they are in need and that that's what God is calling us to do. Um, so as we're going through, you know, this kind of upheaval of um, systems and and ways of thinking about things and, and people are upset, you know, as Christians, we can go through that with a calm assurance, right? Uh, because we know the end of the story and uh, people may say to us, you know, hey, how do you know the, uh, how are you able to be calm in these um, circumstances? And so we need to have a ready answer. And John 16, 33 came to mind. And that's where we're told that um, these words I have spoken unto you that um, in me, ye might have peace in the world. You shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer because I have overcome the world. And so that is our hope and that is our um, assurance. And that's something that we should be able to um, share with people and know, you know, we're, yes, we're, we're not, um, we're not exempt from having tough times and having challenges, um, but we know that if we're in Christ, we're going to um, overcome them. And so we persevere um, through the difficult times. Um, I would also say that from, um, you know, a history perspective, as I started to look at things, um, you know, we can't go back into history and change things. History is what it is. We can learn um, from historical events and we can make changes based on those learnings, but we can't go back into time. So we're really just called to do the best we can in this time that we're in to affect positive change um, for the future. I think another few things to keep in mind is when it comes to everybody doing everything right, um, there's only one perfect being that's ever been been here on earth, and that is Jesus Christ. You know, we had perfection um, at the time of the Garden of Eden, and we kind of messed that up. And so um, now we have um, Christ, who is the propitiation for um, our sin, if we believe and we follow um follow him. So we are called to do our best. And we know that scripture um, tells us that um, there was good works for us to do that were planned in advance. Um, and so we need to kind of recognize that we're in this moment, not accidentally. God knew that we were going to be um, in this moment and he calls us to be representatives for him in this moment so when we're acting we shouldn't be acting just only of our own will but we should be acting as ambassadors for christ so what would christ do how does christ make a difference um, in that situation that should really be kind of our our thought process and our approach so when we think about that and we think about the compassion that christ had for people there are several um several uh examples that came to mind one would be the samaritan woman at the well where she doesn't even know that she needs living water she just knows that life's kind of bad you know she's um 
been with these different uh, relationships. They haven't worked out. She's going to the well in the middle of the day to get this water. There's a Jewish guy sitting there. They're not supposed to interact, but um, he does um, talk to her and he ends up giving her something she doesn't even know she needs. And we have that as Christians. Um, We have that thing that some people don't even know they need. And Now, maybe they're willing to converse um, with us on different um, subjects and give us opportunity to talk about our hope. And that allows us to share with them um, this information. So we need to keep that in mind in terms of how God presents opportunities um, to us to um, be a light for him. Um, Also, when you think about the um, good the Good Samaritan, um, the Good Samaritan and, and Luke, um, we learn that here's here's a man that's been beaten up, robbed. He's kind of left there for dead. Um, the Good Samaritan um, comes along and he helps take care of this individual in need. And that's the level of compassion that we as Christians are called to. Um, The Good Samaritan has the means to be able to take this person to get medical attention and to be kept at that location for uh, medical condition with full assurance that um, the Good Samaritan is going to take care of it. So, you know, when we're in positions where we can help others, that's what Christ is calling for us to do. That's why he's extended those blessings to us. That's why he's extended that opportunity, that influence to us, to have that influence for him. Um, When we think about the adulterous um, woman in the Bible, and um, here's someone that got caught in the act of adultery. Um, This was something she could be stoned um, for. In fact, you know, the community is ready to stone her. And um, Jesus says, you know, he who is without sin cast the first stone. Well, nobody can. They've got to put down their stones and leave. Jesus is the only one that has the um, power to condemn her. And his response is to give her another opportunity to give her a chance. And he says, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Again, we're called to that same level of compassion. Um, you know, here's somebody that was doing something they shouldn't have been doing. Um, you know, why they were doing it, you know, we don't really know the motive. We can guess a lot, but the bottom line is they were in the wrong. Um, but Christ's response to them is to forgive them, to let them know that um, they can start afresh they can go. And I think that's what we are also called to kind of understand and to do. So, you know, and and thinking about the the church and and thinking about um, where we are, um, we have so much to offer, so much to share um, as the family of God. If everybody were in the family of God and we treated everybody with respect and we wanted the best for everyone and we saw everyone as um, equals and that our differences were just something that kind of made us look a little different, that they weren't differentiators in terms of our value or in terms of our relationship with one another. What a wonderful world that would be. That would mimic heaven on earth. And I believe that's what Christ wants for the church. He wants the church to mimic um, a little bit of heaven um, on earth when we come together. And that is what we need to show the world. The more they can see that, um, the more some of this justice, some of this um, joy in living, um, they'll be able to experience. So I'm running a little long on time. I'm going to kind of quickly go to a couple things that I want to share. One is an example that I heard uh, around um, differences and and so forth. And um, it looked at differences like a salad. And it said, you know, when you put together a great salad, you want one that has, you know, a lot of different um, vegetables in it and a lot of different flavors that 
kind of all tie together and make that salad great. So it's a mixed salad. We're not trying to make everything lettuce or make everything bell peppers or make everything tomatoes. Um, we want all of the different flavors blended together. And as uh, a church, as a body, you know, we're told that there are many um many members and they all have different functions and we have to realize that as well that we all want to come together so that we can be complete but we all have a function and there are differences and those differences are a good thing uh, because it allows us to to function um fully you know or in that example of the salad it allows that salad to just be that much fuller as a mixed uh, as a salad bowl Um, I want to end with um, some verses out of the book of James um, and chapter 2 in the book of James chapter 2 we're um, told that you know we should not be judgmental we're also told that we shouldn't treat others um, differently. In fact, um, we shouldn't have favoritism is basically what the um, scripture says. In in James chapter 2, it talks about, you know, when people are meeting, you know, do we treat um, somebody that looks like they're rich better than somebody um, that looks like they're um, poor? That those are things that we should not, um, should not do. Um, The, the the scripture also talks about making sure that we are practicing uh, mercy and not being judgmental. So that's really, um, really very important. And uh, specifically, James chapter 2, verses 12, it says, Speak and act as those who are going to be judged by the law that gives freedom because judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful. And I think that first part, you know, speak and act as those who are going to be judged by the law that gives freedom. That's really important when we're interacting with one another, Um, making sure that we're speaking from love, making sure that we're um, sharing things that are positive. Um, sometimes when we have tough information to give to give to somebody, we just have to again um, be speaking in a way that they can hear that um, information. We need to be empathetic in our approach um, to speaking with them. So I think the scriptures really guide us, um, through how we are to be representatives of Christ in these circumstances that we face today and that we will face as Christians. We are to be a representative of Christ, um, to understand how he might respond with love, with compassion, with truth, with respect, wanting the best for each and every one of us. I hope that these words have been beneficial um, to you and um, helpful to you. It was good for me definitely to go through and just remember, recall, revisit um, those things that Christ would have me um, say, do, and how he would have me respond in these tough circumstances, and also to gain assurance um, that he wants us to do our best. That's all he calls us to do, is just to do our best and to represent him in love. Again, thank you so much for the opportunity, and I hope you have a good week. Bye-bye.